Double Draw Graphics Suit is a powerful, completely loaded, professional design software for producing solid vector illustrations, photo editing, and typography projects. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to use Corel Draw software. I'll see you in a bit. Hi, and welcome to Public Health Resources channel, where we help students, residents, researchers, and teachers improve their skills and make them more ready to face current and future public health challenges and threats. Today we'll be talking about Corel Draw Graphic Suit, which is a very easy but powerful tool that can be used by public health professionals to create illustrations, infographics, and designs that are useful in producing amazing public health messages. These public health messages help to play a vital role in disease prevention and saves thousands and millions of lives. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos when they drop. Now, I never thought knowing how to use graphic software was important to public health professionals till I started seeing very often public health posters and messages. There's this one poster on COVID-19. <laughs> if you see that poster, oh my God. All right, I'm sure many of you know that poster I'm talking about. Well, that's story for another day. Also, as a researcher, you may have to present your research findings at a conference for a poster presentation. All right. You may face serious problems designing your poster if you don't have basic skills using design software like CorelDRAW. I know most of you will say, I'll just give it to a graphic designer to do it for me. Well, you can do that, but don't forget, it's going to cost you money and most times it may not be done to your taste. Believe me, I had to learn how to use graphic design software when I wasn't finding it easy with those graphic designers. So for this quick tutorial, we're going to start off by installing CorelDRAW. All right. Then we're going to explore the graphical user interface. All right. Then we'll be working with the vectors, um, working with images, working with also text, and then finally saving and exporting our work. Alrighty, let's get stuck in. Installing the Corel Draw graphic suits. Corel Draw is not cheap, as it costs two hundred and sixty-nine dollars annually, or five hundred dollars for a one-time fee. Luckily, there's a free trial version that everyone can install, albeit it's for 15 days all right we can use the trial version to see if the software is good for us and then if you find it amazing then you can go ahead and get the annual license if it's something that's useful for you or you will buy the one-time license all right so to install the trial version we'll just type on corel draw in the google search bar okay now please be careful with the way you access sites on the internet so you don't get into trouble all right your computer can get hacked by simply just downloading and installing some software that uh, claimed to be original so always look at the url all right, and make sure it's from a credible source. A lot of individuals pose on the internet with fake sites, especially for software that are very popular. And CorelDRAW is one of the popular software. Unfortunately, when you search on Google, the fake ones might even rank higher than the original websites. Um, crazy things will happen if you download and install that software. So when online, always look before you leap. All right, so see here we have CorelDRAW. It's CorelDRAW.com. All right, that's the correct website. And we can see the price, right? If you want to purchase it, you can just click on uh, your choice and follow the instructions. But we'll click on the free trials up there, okay? And hit on download to uh, download an executable file. You need to have a strong internet connection because it's going to do uh, the installation online, okay? So let's click on the executable file um, to begin the installation. Now, allow the installation wizard to do his thing, all right? Then we'll see it says, thank you for installing. And that means it's finished installing. You have to agree to the end user license agreement so you just scroll down and then agree and then enter your details now hit continue and click on finish and now we have corel draw installed and we are good to go okie dokie add the key. getting started with the corel draw program now let's go ahead and launch the corel draw software okay you see why it shows us the number of days left i have 15 days left in my trial you can see all right you can watch the tutorials here and learn about using Corel Draw. Now let's click here to get started and we'll start by opening a new document. Okay, good. So we have some presets on this side. Now we'll just leave the default one and then come to document settings over here. Let's write the name of our document. I uh, will call this a poster. All right. Now we'll just give it two pages. Okay. Change the orientation to landscape. And I like my measurements in centimeters, so we'll change to centimeters and then click OK. All right, this takes us to the Corel Draw workspace, the Corel Draw graphical user interface. Now, the topmost part here is called the title bar, like we all know. All right, here you will see that I'm using the evaluation copy of um, Corel Draw. It also displays the name of the document open, so you see where it says poster. All right, next is the menu bar with the drop down options. All right, and you can see different drop down options. Then the next below it is the toolbar. And this contains shortcut to menu items and other commands that are commonly used. Now immediately below the toolbar is the property bar. 
Now, this is a very important bar that displays commands that are related to tools that are currently in use, all right? For example, if you are using what we call the pen tool, all right, it will display various commands um, that you can use along with the pen tool. Like if you want to add a node or create a node or, uh, we'll be coming to that shortly, okay? Immediately below it is the documents tab, all right? Which lets us to select the document um, that we want to work on, okay? You can see I have two documents open, right? One is the welcome screen, and then the other is this poster document that we just created. So with the documents tab, I can move quickly between open documents, all right? Now, this window that I'm standing in is called the drawing window, all right? This is where the document that we are working on stays, all right? And then the document itself, as you can see here, is referred to as the drawing page, okay? Next, to the left of the drawing window is the powerful toolbox. Now, this provides the tools for creating or modifying objects that are drawn on the drawing page, all right? So on the right of the drawing window is the docker. This is a detachable bar that displays task and tool related controls such as command buttons and options. Beside it there is the color palette, which is also a detachable bar. It contains color swatches that you can use to apply colors to your design. You'll see that in a moment, all right? Now, below is the status bar and it displays object position properties such as type, fill, and color. Awesome, right? Now, let's go on to take a deeper dive on the Corel Draw toolbar. The Corel Draw toolbox. The toolbox is a set of icons that you find located vertically to the left side of the workspace. So and it appears by default and it contains tools for drawing and editing images. Well, there are a lot of tools here. And if you hover over the icons just like this, um, you will get a tooltip that pops up. And this tooltip shows the name of the tool and its function. Now, some of the tools are hidden. The ones you see here are visible by default, while others are grouped in what we call flyouts. Okay, now these flyouts open to reveal a set of tools. So for these tools, you see a small arrow by the right hand corner, all right? That arrow is called the flyout arrow. Now clicking on it will reveal the flyouts that I was talking about. And these flyouts are associated with a group of similar tools, all right? So let's go to the shape tool. Now you can see it has a flyout arrow, right? Now, and by clicking on that arrow, it will reveal the flyout where we can find more tools, okay? So we can see that we have about six more tools here. Now clicking on any one of those tools will display its icon in a toolbox, okay? And in most cases, the cursor also changes to that um, icon, all right? So if you select a tool, you will see a small instruction on how to use the tool uh, in the status bar down at the bottom, all right? Now, you can add or remove tools to the toolbox by clicking on this plus button, all right? And checking off the tools that you want added. So here I will add the outline tool, awesome and then close it. Now, it's important to note that the interactive property bar at the top works with the toolbox. So okay. when we select any tool in the toolbox, we can modify the tool with the icons or settings in the property bar, all right? So for example, when I select the text tool, okay, I can write any text and I can go to the property bar and change the font type, okay? And I can change the size as well, as well as the position. There are also more options than those presented in the title bar and these extra options can be found in the docker. So uh, for text like this, we can go to the text docker. Now we can see there are many more options for modifying text here, right? Finally, this toolbox, just like many bars in this software, is highly customizable, all right? It can be docked in one place like it is right now or it can be floating or it can be moved anywhere on the workspace, okay? Now to do this, just go to any of the bars like this and we'll just do a right click. Okay, on, then on check where it says lock toolbars. Okay, then you see a dotted line for each of the toolbar, meaning it's no longer docked, uh, and then you can move it around. Once we move it out of place, uh, we'll see that it's floating, so we can resize it like this, or even move it to anywhere we want. We can also close it if need be, all right? So if we don't need it, we'll just close it, and you see it's gone, but um, we're gonna need it. Hmm. How then do we bring it back? <laughs> it's easy, no worries. So let's just bring it back by clicking on the Windows tab and then going to the toolbar and then selecting the toolbox. And now we have it back. So and let's put it back to where it was um, by default and lock it in place. Now, now let's take a deeper look at the Dockers, shall we? Dockers are a very important part of the CorelDRAW workspace, all right? And they provide access to many of the functions that are available in CorelDRAW, okay? Now, it's just a type of dialog box that can stay on the workspace to allow you quick access to commands, tools, and several functions. Now, the dockers are usually by the right-hand side of the workspace. Let me just quickly show you how to open any docker, all right? So, we'll go to the menu bar, 
and then click on window okay uh, then you select um, dockers and select any docker you want to open okay now, now let's open the transform docker all right now you can open multiple dockers at the same time but they are all going to be stacked or nested on each other as you open them all right so let's open another docker one docker that is very handy is the learn docker all right so let's open it so we'll just go to window and then docker and then it's the last so just scroll down to the last you see it it's so nice that it gives you hints for any of the tools that you're currently using all right such a brilliant one from the corel draw team so you see when i click on this text it starts to quickly explain what i can do with it all right so i think you should try it out it's super awesome so you can see now we have two dockers that are open the learn docker and the transform docker the active one is the learn docker and you can see that it has a light blue color okay now if we want the transform docker we just need to click on it and we'll see it um, showing up there we can also come down here where the docker is um, nested and click on the plus sign and just check off the docker that we want to open or close so if we want to open any docker or close any docker we'll just go back to this plus sign and click on it and then we can open it now let's add the properties docker okay great okay the dockers can be minimized to give you more real estate um, in your workspace but they are accessible anytime you need them so if i click on this sign here it will collapse the docker and if i click on any other docker tab it will expand the docker so just clicking on any of the docker tab will expand the docker now depending on your workflow you can decide to keep a few dockers open for easy access all right and you can even move specific dockers around so let's move the transform docker to the other side um, near the toolbox all right just to change our workflow so click on the tab and then drag it away okay so let's go ahead and close the transform docker by clicking on the x by its tab yes and i think you should go ahead and try out all these dockers they are really really cool and, and nice now let's get our hands dirty with some real examples shall we working with vectors in corel draw now let's draw a quick line by enabling the freehand tool in the toolbox okay to draw just drag the mouse like pencil on paper okay so to draw a straight line click where you want the line to begin and where you want it to end okay simple all right to set options just double click on the freehand tool and you will see several options that we can adjust in any way we want okay to draw parallel lines click the parallel drawing button on the property bar and then click the parallel lines button on the parallel drawing toolbar before you start your drawing try the artistic media tool uh, to try different line designs very awesome crazy also so you can also try the live sketch and the smart drawing feature to have your shapes adjusted automatically like this and to draw precise curves use the three points tool to draw like this awesome now to define the start and end points of the curve click where you want to start the curve and draw where you want to end the curve and you can go like this okay to define the center point of the curve release the mouse button and then click where you want the center of the curve to be and you have an awesome curve okay now other tools for drawing curves are the b-spline and the bezier tools all right to draw a b-spline just click where you want to start the line then click to set as many control points as you need to shape your line okay and then to end the line just double click all right now we can reshape the line by using control points any of these control points all right so select the line by using the shape tool and reposition the control points to reshape the line okay easy peasy now how about drawing shapes yeah you guessed right we can select the polygon tool so to draw a polygon um, just select this tool and drag where you want to place it okay now holding down control if you want to draw the polygon with equal sides okay now to adjust the number of sides or points on the selected polygon what we're going to do is to just type a value in the number of points you see that in the um, property bar okay so good now to change the polygon's shape click on the shape tool and to shape a polygon by mirror editing just drag a node good now to smear the outside of an object click inside the object and then close to the edge and then drag it outside just like this just like this and the same thing if you want to smear the inside of a selected object just click outside the object and uh, just close to the edge and then drag it inwards awesome now notice we just have a rectangle ellipse and polygon tools on the toolbox does this mean that we cannot draw other shapes in um, corel draw now if we want other shapes it's simple we just go under the polygon fly out and then we'll select common shapes good and we'll see on the property bar many different shapes that we can select from so let's select one of these flowchart um, shapes um, and 
when you double click on it we'll see all these arrows that appear okay we can use them to move and reshape this shape anyhow we want it now the circular dot in the center is the axis on which the shape rotates so we can even shift this good and then rotate it you see how it's rotating differently okay cool, cool right now there are lots of things that you can do with vectors in coil row coil row is one of the best vector software you find for graphics all right so just play around with it and see what you can do i've only just scratched the surface all right let's go on to images working with images in coral draw now working with images is very similar to working with vectors so we can get pictures into coral draw using several methods all right the simplest is just to copy and paste the picture into coral draw but let's click on file all right and then we'll see where it says import okay and then we'll select your picture so I have a picture file, it's that of an N95 mask. Okay, so let's say we want to use it for a health campaign. All right, so we'll need to drag and adjust the size before Corel Draw imports it. So let's just do that. Awesome. And this that I've seen, it serves as a guide for your drawing. All right, now using the pick tool, we can move the picture around just like this. Okay, and then we can enlarge it or we can shrink it. Good. Now, if we click on it again, we can we'll get these handles. Awesome. Now, we can skew it just like this. Or we can even rotate it like we, rot like we did with the vectors. And even change the center of rotation just like this. Just like we did with vectors. All right. We can also change this transparency by going to the property docker. So let's go and do a fountain transparency. Awesome. Let's even put a bitmap um, type of transparency cool all right now we can select the shape tool to start adjusting different aspects of the picture so we can crop it using these handles yeah we can even use the smear tool um, just like this to smear the edges awesome we can use the swirl tool to make some funny um, swirly shapes at the edges like this and like this in fact we can work really with any way we choose all right now this tutorial will not be complete if we didn't add text right so let's go working with text in Corel Draw. To use text, we select the text tool, all right? Now click and drag the place in the document where you want the text to be, okay? So let's just write the message, use a face mask regularly, awesome. Now we can move the text the same way we moved the vectors and shapes by using the pick tool, okay? So let's go to the pick tool and then we can rotate it, good. Now we can skew if we want to, all right, so we can select on any text and change the font type and the style from the property bar on top. Good. Now we can even uh, mirror the text. So let's mirror horizontally or vertically. Awesome. Now from the properties docker by the side, we can also change the font type, change the size, um, the background, change anything about the text. Okay. Uh, the outline, let's change the outline. Okay, the fill. Um, we can practically design anything with this software okay now after all your design and you're ready to print or you're ready to keep just make sure you don't forget to save all right saving your documents with Corel Draw. now there are several ways of saving your work in Corel Draw. we can just simply hit on the on file and then click on save like this okay or we click on save as and give it a new name but one particular type of saving which is super important is saving on the cloud so Corel Draw allows you to save to the cloud directly which is super super awesome okay so here you will enter your Corel Draw account details and you have it saved to the cloud for safekeeping now this is a quick introduction to Corel Draw for beginners now if this video was helpful to you please take a second to add a like to this video all right and subscribe to this youtube channel so you can get notified of my next videos when they drop and of course in the comment section below you can post your comments questions or requests and, and as always thanks for watching